Hello and welcome. So glad that you're here and it is so good to be with you today. My name is Eric Dykstra, your host on Strength for Today. Today is Friday, so that means we get to have a little bit of fun through some exercises and activations. And these really are just creative ways that the Holy Spirit has kind of shown me and taught me how to interact with Scripture. So today, we're actually going to look at Colossians 2 and 3 with some verses and interact it creatively. And this is just a way where so many times when we come to the word, we can read it for information. Even last episode, we talked about John chapter four, when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, where he said, they're going to come to know me and worship me, not only by truth, but in spirit as well. And so many times our approach to scripture is reading for information as opposed to reading for an encounter. And so one of the ways that the Lord has really worked with me is he speaks a lot to me through images and I've learned to kind of interact with him through his word in some creative ways. And so not saying that all these might necessarily connect, but one of my goals that I stated in one of the first episodes was to really be able to give you some tools and activate things in your life that can deepen your connection with who Jesus is and hopefully allow him to become more present, that you can become more aware of him. And for some of you, maybe you just don't know that you've been actually been hearing from the Lord as you read the word and the things that you see and hear, but as you process them through the spirit, you're going to realize that those images that go through your mind and in your spirit are actually from him. And so what I've learned to do is be aware of those and then just start asking questions and kind of progress and interact with him through those and the Lord will often build on it. And so that's what we're going to have the opportunity today. So let's just dive in to uh, a, a previous letter that Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter two. This is actually one of my favorite verses, um, but this was a verse that I've been reflecting on for a long time, and I just want to read this in the amplified version, and this is what it says. It says, for we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created in Christ Jesus reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. This is a passage that I'm sure many of us are familiar with, but what I want to have us do is really focus on It says, we are his workmanship. Several years ago, when I was at a conference, I was actually engaged in worship. And I don't remember the songs even that we were singing, but one of the things that was new to me was they had someone up on the stage with a blank canvas and it was a painter. And a lot of times what they kind of called us is prophetic art. And as the worship unfolds, They just start painting a picture that's led of the Holy Spirit that's depicting what the Lord is doing or an image that wants that he wants to kind of be caught in our spirit. And I can remember as I began to worship, looking at this image and it unfolded. And by the end, it was this beautiful image of these horses that were riding on the on the waves. And it was like they were riding into the shore. And it was just a beautiful scene and it just captured my heart and my spirit about what the Lord was doing and how he was allowing us to kind of ride the waves on these horses into the shores. And it just ministered to me in such a powerful way. And so uh, what, uh, as I was at that scene, as I was at that place and I was in worship, there was another scene that the Lord just began to kind of unfold for me. And I want to paint that picture before we dive into Colossians 2 and 3 and kind of do some of these exercises and activations with you. But as I saw that image emerge that day and what the Lord started to unfold is 
in Ephesians 2, Paul talks about how we are his workmanship. And in the Amplified, it says, his own master work, a work of art. And I want you to hear this from his heart to yours today, that you are significant, that you are his workmanship, his masterpiece of art, going back to when God created Adam. Everything he created before Adam, he made the statement that it was good. And when he created Adam, he said it is really good or very good with an extra emphasis, meaning that we were his pinnacle of creation, that you are the pinnacle of his creation. And I want you to let that settle into your heart to see yourself as a beautiful piece of his artwork, like a master artist painting on the canvas. If you've ever been to an art gallery or if you've ever seen someone from start to finish paint a picture, it starts as a blank canvas. And as the artist goes, there's more paints that are added and all these things start to come into place. And by the end, you've got this beautiful image. And I want you to just get an image that that is what, how the Lord formed you from the very beginning of time. That you may see your world, that you may see yourself as kind of being a blank canvas, not having a lot to offer, maybe feeling empty, maybe feeling like there's just bland colors or it's just white. There's nothing that you have to offer. But as you come into relationship with the Lord and as you allow him to begin to speak into your heart and begin to form you, what happens is that all these beautiful colors start to be put on the canvas. And then what happens is there's this beautiful picture of what begins to emerge. And this is what the Lord's kind of shared with me over the past several years is this is a lot like how God develops and orchestrates our identity and begins to form who we are. We start off, think about, for those of you who know Christ personally, have entered into relationship, what it was like beforehand. Maybe it seemed like there was an empty canvas or for me, you know, I defined it as being an athlete or being a good student or going to college, getting a degree. These were the things that defined my life. But when I had that moment, when I came to know Christ personally, it was like all these doors began to open up and all these new colors on the canvas became real. And there was a picture of my true identity of how God saw me that began to form and shape. And I just want you to take a moment to think about God, the creator, with an empty canvas. And as he puts you um, into being, and as you were conceived, seeing the Father's hands form you in the womb, putting his DNA, his unique DNA that only you have out of all the people in the world, he formed it in you. Just see the smile on his face as he begins to think about all the wonderful things he's placed in you and that he's going to get to see expressed through you as you partner with him. Just see that huge smile and that huge grin and, and the sparkle in his eye as he thinks over your life. And as he puts it into the world, you come into the world. And as, as, as the world unfolds and as you grow and as you mature, you discover more of who he is. And the more of him that you discover, the more of you that begins to emerge on the canvas. And this is what the Lord showed me recently with this passage. You are his workmanship created to do good works in the world. That's what this verse says. He said he knew it from beforehand, before the world began. And he made you ready for this. So where you're sitting today, he has made you ready and given you everything that you need. And now just imagine yourself watching him create the identity he's placed in you he turns to you and he hands you the paintbrush and he says now I want you to create and add to this the desires that are in your heart and he gives you freedom he gives you permission to take the brush to create things in your life to be free as he's made you to be 
because he's put a DNA. He's put his identity in you, but it takes our energy and effort at times to partner with him to fully express it because he doesn't just want to be uh, the puppeteer just kind of controlling us. We're not puppets. We are human beings. So he's given us a free will to have choices, to be granted permission, to flow in the gifts and the passions that he's placed in your heart. So I just want you to hear, he's given you the paintbrush to create. And then here's another part of that picture that began to unfold for me is just like any good artist puts his signature on the back of the painting. What I saw him say to me and what I see him saying to you is that he puts his very signature and says, you are my creation. I am so proud of how I've made you and who I've created you to be, regardless of what everybody else says, regardless of what everybody else may think, you have the acceptance of your creator and he's not shy and he doesn't hide his signature. He puts it right up front and says, this is my son, this is my daughter, and I am well pleased because did God the Father not say about his son, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. We're going to see in a minute as we jump into Colossians that are, we're hidden in Christ, and if we are in Christ and that's our identity, does that not mean that he is well pleased with you? as well, his creation? I think it does. So let's jump in and finish up here in Colossians 2 and in Colossians 3. We're going to jump back over to Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to start at verse 19. The author's going on to talk about those, uh, he's saying, don't let your prize be robbed. Because remember, he was talking about the fullness of knowing Christ and the treasure that Christ is, having access to all the wisdom. And he's saying, don't let this be robbed from you by what the world says or how the world defines what you can do and what is available to you. He says, don't let anybody disqualify you for they refuse to take hold of the true source. But then he says, but we receive directly from him and his life supplies vitality into every part of his body through the joining ligaments connecting us all as one. So you have the ability to directly receive from the Lord. Something one of my mentors said to me early on when I was came, coming on staff out in Colorado was this. He talked about being a codependent Christian, meaning that so many of us go through life being codependent on someone else's experience, someone else's wisdom or revelation or teaching or gifting. When God has put so much inside of you and he called forth all the greatness inside of you and he breathes on it as you're willing to put it out there. And he doesn't want you to live dependent on someone else's experience or someone else's knowledge or wisdom. He has so much in store for you. And he says he supplies vitality into every part of his body. So right now, I just want you to take a moment to pause and to picture yourself receiving strength, as it said earlier on in this chapter, vitality into every part of your body. So just imagine the spirit of God permeating every part of your body. It might be a part that's physically tired or sore. There may be a part where you feel as disjointed. But receive the vitality of all that Christ is because he brings wholeness and he holds everything together. And just notice what that feels like in your body to receive the vitality, the strength, the life as it flows throughout your body from your toes all the way up into your stomach and chest, out to your arms and into your neck and into your mind, into your eyes, your ears, your mouth, nose. All these parts of who you are created 
in reflecting the image of the one who created you. He says he brings you vitality and fullness of life. He is the divine head who guides his body and causes it to grow by the supernatural power of God. So again, receive this wisdom and knowledge. Let it flow through your body. See him as the divine head. In our physical head, we have a brain. We have eyes, ears, a nose, mouth. So much of how we function in life is driven through our head. And now see him, Jesus, as the head over the body. It says that we are the body. We're all connected. And everything in our body that begins to function draws its commands, draws its order and function from the head down, the brain communicates and sends messages to each one of our parts to function. And it allows all of our parts to function together. So see the Lord doing that in your being physically, but also spiritually. May he awaken and bring life into the gifting and the skills and the creativity and the solutions that you bring into the world. And it says, don't retreat back to being bullied by the standards and opinions of religion. For example, their strict requirements. And again, the author goes back and he kind of describes this process of it's easy to go back to what we've always known. And so many people, even in Jesus's day, got caught up in traditions, in regulations, in limitations that God never put on them. And God's saying, be free, my child. Let my life flow in you. Let the creative part of the Holy Spirit, that's who the Holy Spirit is. He's creative. He brings solutions. He ministers truth. He counsels you. He comforts you. He renews your mind. Letting these parts of us be true and not going back to what we've always known, but being responsive to the new thing that God is doing, uh, doing in us and calling us into. He's making us into his image. We are a new creation. And so in order to live into that creation, we have to respond to the new covenant that we have through relationship with Jesus Christ. We respond to the new. We don't live from the old or we don't try to go back to the old. How many times in the Old Testament did you see the Israelites complaining to Moses, wanting to go back, wishing that they could go back into slavery because they were comfortable, but the Lord was teaching them a new way of how to move forward. Let's jump to Colossians 1 through 3, and I want to give you a couple other just ways to interact with this. I'm reading from the Passion Translation, and I hope these will activate the Holy Spirit in you. And feel free at any time to hit pause and come back and listen, or even go back and revisit some of these, because I believe that the Holy Spirit will begin to activate things through these exercises. This one says, Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. Again, think about what it would have been like to be resurrected as Jesus was. He knew the plan from his father was that he was going to have to be crucified and to die. And that's not something anybody would wish to take on but he knew that there would be the resurrection after, that better things to come, uh, an ascended body, an ascended lifestyle of being able to defeat death, defeat sin, and reconnect us with all of the goodness and the power and the life that God originally designed back in the garden with Adam and Eve and how they were meant to walk in relationship with them. Now imagine today, maybe you feel dry, maybe you feel empty, maybe you feel spiritually dead. 
but I want you to take this into account. It says Christ's resurrection is your resurrection too. So just allow yourself to feel resurrection life. God, I call forward resurrection life coming forward into every heart, every spirit, every mind. Rise up, spirit. Let us feel the resurrection power of our resurrected King Jesus. And may it fill every body, every heart from head to toe in this moment. I would invite you just to simply sit there for a minute. Focus on resurrection power. You have access to it because it's who Jesus was. And earlier on in chapter two of Colossians, it said that you have access to the fullness of Christ. Verse two in chapter three says, yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with the distractions of the natural realm. So I want you to just picture yourself and, and think, what is it like to fill my mind and to feast on the words of God? What tends to happen as you meditate and reflect on his words? How do they bring life? How do they minister to you? What application do you get from his word? Just remembering the words of Jesus is that we are not to live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God back into the equivalent in the Old Testament of when God provided manna every day for the Israelites when they woke up. They woke up and there was provision of bread, manna that came from heaven. That's the image, the picture of what God does in us as we feast on his word and let his word come alive in us. It resurrects our spirit. It resurrects our hope. It resurrects the amount of energy that we have. It resurrects purpose and vision. It resurrects our character to reflect and model and imitate that of Christ. This is good news. One exercise that I often do is to just get a piece of paper. And on one side of it, all the distractions that may come as you're sitting there reflecting on who he is and just get those out. And then on the other half, fill your thoughts with heavenly thoughts on scriptures, on promises, on characteristics of who God is, and begin to focus your mind, meditate on those things. As Joshua said, I keep your word constantly in my heart and constantly before me. David said, I constantly meditate on your word when I wake up in the morning and before I go to bed at night. There is a practice and a discipline and a joy that we have in keeping him in front of us, in letting his word bring life into who we are. Verse three, your crucifixion with Christ has severed the tie to this life. And now your true life is hidden away in God, in Christ. So now picture yourself being crucified with Christ. And as Christ was crucified, so are we. It's severed. Everything, every obstacle that may hinder us, every sin that maybe we've committed, your life is made new through the death in the resurrection of who Jesus is because it killed off every sin, every transgression, every iniquity, every obstacle that the enemies set before you to keep you from relationship with God is now removed. And it's like this open highway straight ahead that God's making a way for you to reconnect and be restored and reconciled to who he is. In your former way of life that we talked about a couple minutes ago, think of it as a lot of times a rope that we feel tied to our past choices and decisions, and we're living in all the consequences and the ramifications. But through the death and resurrection of Christ, that rope has been severed. Your past no longer controls your today. And it can't hold you back from stepping into tomorrow in your future, in your destiny that God has for you. And I'll close with these verses in Colossians 3. 
verse 10 and 11. Verse 10 says this, for you have acquired new creation life which is continually being renewed into the likeness of the one who created you, giving you the full revelation of God. You have acquired new creation life. Again, in times where you feel dry or that you're in a desert, let the river of God be released in your spirit. Just simply ask him to minister and receive and as you receive, see his hand recreating. See his hand as an artist at the canvas, creating new things for you ahead. Maybe where it seems black and white, the Lord comes into your healing process. And he comes into your brokenness through invitation. He comes into the pain and the trauma, the brokenness that you've been a part of maybe in your life. And he begins to mend those things. He begins to heal those things. And he adds all of this color. I believe that's an image of what he wants to do in your life and in the lives of those around you. And you are being continually renewed into the likeness of the one who created you. This is something I'm always going back to and letting it strengthen me as I'm being made into his image, into the likeness of the one who created everything that started with a blank canvas and spoke the stars into existence, who put the sun in place, who created the waters, the seas, the oceans, the shores, all the animals. I mean, it's amazing of who God is and you reflect his image. He's making you into his image. How wonderful is that? And in this new creation life, your nationality makes no difference. Your ethnicity, your education or economic status, they matter nothing for it is Christ that means everything as he lives in every one of us. This is the passion translation. And I love that thought that in this new creation life, education, ethnicity, economic status doesn't make a difference. But what matters is Christ, who is in all of us. We live in a world that is very divided. And Christ is unifying regardless of whatever race you might be, economic status or the amount of education that you have, he will live in you. And he is so proud of what he's put in you and how he's made it you to reflect his image. And he's given you a voice and a message that is needed in the world today. In the book of Acts, and I'll close with this. It talked about two of the disciples and they were doing miraculous things. And it says about them that they recognized that they had no special education or uh, super persuasive speech. But they, what they did notice was that they had been with Jesus. And they carried the love and the heart of God into the world around them. And that's the privilege and the honor of what we get to do. Because God, all he needs is your heart, a sense of humility to receive all that he is and all that he can do and apply it to your life. And he closes it by saying this, that for it is Christ that means everything as he lives in every one of us, every one of us. And we're marked by the amount of love that we carry to the world around us. So hopefully these exercises have been encouraging, engaging for you. I would encourage you to go back and to revisit them. And even if it doesn't come at naturally at first, these are things in my own life that over time of being around people who kind of flowed in these kind of giftings, uh, it became more natural and comfortable for me. And now I, I get to interact with scripture in new life-giving ways because that's the God we serve. And that's the God of scripture is to bring life.
in his desires to live it out in relationship with you. So be blessed today and may the Lord strengthen you. May his face shine upon you because he is absolutely delighted in who you are. God bless.